Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, I am back today to discuss the hair loss community's most favorite sacred cow of all time, Oral Minoxidil. Oral Minoxidil, it has seen an absolute explosion in popularity ever since the New York Times fluff piece brought the treatment into international stardom. People who have followed my channel for some time now, they know that I am skeptical of Oral Minoxidil, and that's mostly because of my concerns about the drug's safety profile. Now. I'm not making this video to discuss the controversy regarding oral minoxidil's safety profile, as I have already made plenty of videos about that particular subject, which I'll link below in the description. But one thing that hasn't been nearly as disputed about oral minoxidil is its efficacy. Many people are under the impression that oral minoxidil is this super efficacious treatment that makes topical minoxidil look like an absolute joke in comparison. Even many people who believe that oral minoxidil is dangerous, they will still claim that it is a more effective treatment than topical minoxidil. Because of this, many people have been choosing oral minoxidil over topical minoxidil on the belief that they'll get better results from the oral variation of this drug. But is this belief really grounded in any kind of scientific reality? Side effects aside, is oral minoxidil really a better, more efficacious treatment than topical minoxidil? Well, fortunately, I've just come across some brand new high-quality research that may put this debate to rest once and for all. So, this is a brand new article that was just published on April 10th of this year. The authors claim that this is the first study to directly compare oral minoxidil with topical minoxidil in men with androgenic alopecia, but that's not actually true as we'll soon see. Anyways, the study is titled, quote, Oral minoxidil versus topical minoxidil for male androge androgenetic alopecia, a randomized clinical trial, unquote. It's always confusing when they say androgenic versus androgenetic. I'm used to saying androgenetic, but they're both accurate, so whatever. Anyways, this study is from Brazil. This is the nation that is most famous for its football, beautiful women, and Blanca from Street Fighter 2. Like the title says, this is a randomized clinical trial, which is the best type of study design that you can do to compare two treatments against each other or to compare a treatment with a placebo. So right away, we already know this is a much better designed study than any of the other studies on oral minoxidil that we have. In the study, the two treatments were 5% topical minoxidil applied twice per day versus 5 milligrams of oral minoxidil once per day. So even though they used topical minoxidil twice per day in the study, it should be noted that once per day topical minoxidil is equally as effective, so we can probably assume that the subjects would get the same results even if they were using it just once daily, and I have a video explaining why once daily topical minoxidil use is just as good for hair loss that I'll link below. So, 5% topical minoxidil is a standard dose for topical minoxidil, but in the case of oral minoxidil, you may notice that the dose they chose for this study is at the high end of dosing of what is commonly considered to be low-dose oral minoxidil. Most people I have seen who use it report that they use 2.5 milligrams per day or even 1 milligram per day. Some people will even try microdosing oral minoxidil by taking 0.25 milligrams per day. So, even though 5 milligrams per day is still commonly considered low-dose oral minoxidil, even by many dermatologists, the 5 milligram dose is actually close to the dose of minoxidil used for treating high blood pressure. So, the difference in dosing between what many people use for hair loss versus what people use for hypertension isn't actually all that much different. That's very important because it is well established that higher dose oral minoxidil can cause very serious cardiovascular side effects like pericardial effusion, which is a fluid buildup around the heart. One of the rationales for using low-dose oral minoxidil was that it would avoid these very risky side effects, but when you are using doses of up to 5 milligrams per day, you are really approaching the fuzzy boundary between low-dose and high-dose where side effects become more problematic. It turns out that even lower doses than 5 milligrams per day can still be associated with cases of pericardial effusion, but like I said, I covered all of that in a previous video, and, or in previous videos actually that I'll link below, I've made several of them. Anyways, the study enrolled 90 male patients with ages ranging from 18 to 55 years old. All the subjects had grade 3 to grade 5 hair loss on the Norwood Hamilton scale. The study was double-blinded, meaning neither the patients nor the researchers knew which treatment each subject was getting during the study. The way that works when the treatments are so different is that each subject took a capsule and applied a solution to their hair. In one set of subjects, the capsule was real minoxidil and the solution was a placebo, while in the other set of subjects, the pill was a placebo and the solution was real topical minoxidil. 
It's a bit confusing, but this ensures that neither the subjects nor the doctors know which subjects are getting which treatment until the very end of the study. The study lasted a total of 24 weeks, and the researchers used hair phototrichograms to measure hair counts in two areas, the frontal area and the vertex area of the scalp. These measurements were taken before treatment and after the full 24 weeks of treatment. The primary endpoint of the study was to see if there was a difference in the counts of terminal hairs in these areas. Terminal hairs are basically just healthy looking hairs. As secondary endpoints, the investigators looked at total hair counts and compared assessment of before and after photos. The subjects also had blood pressure and heart rate measured, but unfortunately, no other cardiac tests were done like electrocardiograms. This is unfortunate because of Minoxidil's cardiac side effects that are well known, so it would have been nice to have that kind of data at our disposal. But like I said, the purpose of this video is to go over oral Minoxidil's efficacy compared to top of Minoxidil, not its safety, and this study does have the data we need. So let's go ahead and get to the results. 68 out of the 90 subjects completed the study. There were 12 dropouts in the oral Minoxidil group and 10 in the topical Minoxidil group, so about the same. Most of the dropouts were due to problems keeping appointments during the COVID-19 epidemic, though one subject in the topical minoxidil group dropped out because of shedding, which frankly is quite unfortunate because shedding is a sign that the drug is working. So I'm hoping the researchers actually explain that to the subject, but whatever. Please guys, do not assume a treatment isn't working for you because you are shedding. Shedding is a good thing, and I'll link my shedding video below if you want to learn about that because the volume of shedding questions I get is astronomical. So anyways, getting back to the actual research here, this table shows shows the overall results of the study. So let's look at absolute differences in terminal and total hair counts. In the frontal area, both treatments increased terminal hair and total hair counts, and the difference between the treatments was not statistically significant. In the vertex area, looking at terminal and total hair counts, it superficially appears that oral minoxidil did better than topical in this area, but again, the differences were not statistically significant, meaning that the difference could have been just due to chance alone. When the researchers analyzed the same data as a percentage change in hair counts, the statistics did show more of an increase in terminal hair counts for oral minoxidil than topical minoxidil in the vertex area. However, the primary endpoint of the study was to look at absolute changes in terminal hair counts in the two areas, and none of those results were statistically significant. When judging the overall before and after photographs, 60% of the oral minoxidil group were judged to have improved versus 48% of the topical minoxidil group. However, this difference was still not statistically significant. When just looking at photographs of the vertex, 70% of the oral minoxidil group were judged to be improved versus 46% of the topical minoxidil group, and this difference was statistically significant. This table here shows the incidence of side effects. The only statistically significant differences in side effects was that more men had hypertrichosis in the oral minoxidil group. Hypertrichosis, it's basically just unwanted excessive hair growth, like body hair growth, which is the most common side effect of oral minoxidil, since the drug is taken systemically, after all. With topical Minoxidil, more men had scalp eczema, which isn't all that surprising since the topical solution is applied directly on the scalp. Shedding was considered an adverse effect in some of the men, and it occurred in 9% of men on oral minoxidil and in 16% on topical minoxidil, though of course, shedding shouldn't really be considered a side effect. It is a necessary step to get hair regrowth, and excessive shedding can actually be a good thing in the first year of treatment. Anyways, there weren't any serious side effects reported amongst any of the subjects, including no effects on heart rate or blood pressure, but it is very important to remember that with just 90 subjects overall, that really is way too small of a number to detect rare but very serious side effects, which we know have been documented to happen with oral minoxidil, including low-dose oral minoxidil, I should add. Again, I've made several videos on those serious cardiovascular side effects that I'll link below, because like I said at the beginning of this video, this video is about the efficacy of oral minoxidil, not its safety. Unfortunately for oral minoxidil, though, despite the slightly better but not statistically significant difference with oral oral minoxidil in the vertex area of the scalp, this study is not a resounding success for oral minoxidil at all. In fact, it is a complete flop. I know that may be hard to believe, but please hear me out here, chums. First of all, Looking at the primary endpoint of regrowth of terminal hairs as judged by absolute hair counts, there was no statistically significant difference between the two treatments. Secondly, the authors noted that topical minoxidil actually seemed to underperform in this study compared to earlier studies of topical minoxidil. This underperformance makes oral minoxidil seem more competitive than it may actually be. The authors blamed the underperformance on possible non-compliance and the fact that the study was performed during the COVID pandemic and it is 
is well known that COVID can cause telogen effluvium that could have affected the results. The authors are forced to conclude that the study did not show that old minoxidil is superior to top of minoxidil. They say, quote, despite the expectations of the great superiority of oral minoxidil for androgenic alopecia, up to now, this modality did not prove to be incontestably superior to topical minoxidil either for men or women, unquote. The reason why they mention women here is because the same group did an earlier study comparing one milligram of oral minoxidil daily with 5% topical minoxidil in women with female pattern hair loss, and that study also showed no difference in hair growth between the two groups. However, the researchers didn't bother mentioning two other studies directly comparing oral minoxidil to topical minoxidil that also did not show any superiority of oral minoxidil to topical minoxidil. This one here compared 0.25 milligrams of oral minoxidil to 2% topical minoxidil directly for female pattern hair loss, and it did not show that oral minoxidil was superior. Of course, Oral minoxidil fans complained that this was too low of a dose of oral minoxidil, but on the other hand, it was being compared to a 2% solution of topical minoxidil instead of a 5% solution, which we know is more effective and more commonly used than 2% topical minoxidil. Then there is this study here that compared 1 milligram of oral minoxidil to 5% topical minoxidil in 65 men and women with androgenic alopecia. This study too showed no difference in efficacy between the two treatments looking at hair diameter and hair density as you can see in these two figures. However, looking at photographic assessments, topical minoxidil seemed to do better than oral minoxidil, though the results weren't statistically significant. The study concluded that, quote, Although topical minoxidil has a better overall therapeutic effect than one milligram of oral minoxidil, the difference between the two groups was not significant, unquote. Well, I know that when this study was published, the oral minoxidil fanboys complained that this wasn't a fair study since one milligram of oral minoxidil was not enough, but now we have a brand new study that actually pushed the dose of low-dose oral minoxidil up to the limit of five milligrams daily, and even at five milligrams daily, it still didn't show any superiority to topical minoxidil at all. So, sorry oral minoxidil fanboys, I was right and you were wrong, so ha ha. The researchers do point out that maybe the study wasn't large enough to show a superiority of oral minoxidil over topical minoxidil, but honestly, if oral minoxidil really was so much better than topical minoxidil as so many people in the hair loss community often claim, then it wouldn't take a huge study to show a difference. And also, it's worth mentioning that these results are consistent with the outcomes of the other comparison studies I mentioned, none of which showed superiority of oral minoxidil over topical minoxidil. The conclusion of the study was, quote, in the study, oral minoxidil 5 mg once per day for 24 weeks did not demonstrate superiority over topical minoxidil 5% twice per day in men with androgenic alopecia, unquote. So there's no doubt that oral minoxidil works. We are talking about minoxidil after all, but there's no evidence it works any better than topical minoxidil. If anything, it may even be less effective than topical minoxidil. Remember, we're talking about 5 milligrams of oral minoxidil taken daily. Most people who say they use oral minoxidil take 2.5 milligrams of oral minoxidil or even lower doses than that. So so if 5 milligrams of oral minoxidil is only equal to 5% topical minoxidil, then there's no reason to think that lower doses will do any better and they might even do worse in terms of efficacy. So I know what a lot of you chooms are about to say, but Kevin, if oral minoxidil isn't any better than topical minoxidil, how come so many people online claim to get better results from oral minoxidil? Well, I don't really give a shit about anecdotes, but if I had to speculate, then here are a few reasons why I think this may be the case. First reason is just better adherence. Oral minoxidil is just a pill that you have to swallow once per day. That is easier to adhere to than rubbing a topical on your scalp daily, which means that people who use oral minoxidil may just be more consistent with their usage of the drug. The second reason is I think some of the people who are using oral minoxidil are experiencing a placebo effect. It isn't all a placebo effect, of course, since we know minoxidil works, but oral minoxidil is a tremendously overhyped drug. It's probably the second most overhyped hair loss treatment of all time, second only only to microneedling. I think many people who use it may be getting a placebo effect due to the belief that they're taking a super efficacious hair growing super drug. I say this as someone who used to buy strongly into the oral minoxidil hype myself. A long time ago, I used oral minoxidil and at the time I felt it gave me really, really great results. Looking back though, I really don't think it gave me any better results than just topical minoxidil because when I eventually dropped oral minoxidil and went back to topical, I didn't lose any ground. So I think the hype is fooling people into believing 
using oral minoxidil is more efficacious than it really is. Also, a lot of the people who post great success stories from oral minoxidil are also using other compounds like finasteride or dutasteride, so it's more likely that most of the results are coming from those drugs instead of oral minoxidil. The last thing I have to address is the sulfotransferase issue, since I know people are going to bring this up in the comment section. A lot of people say that oral minoxidil may work better for some people, since it might get around the problem that some people have with reduced levels of the sulfotransferase enzyme in their scalp. Sulfotransferase, for those who don't know, is the enzyme that converts minoxidil into its active form, which is minoxidil sulfate. On paper, this seems like a sound theory. However, it's not clear that this is actually true. People with reduced sulfotransferase in their scalp may also have reduced sulfotransferase in the liver. So, it's not clear that people taking oral minoxidil really get around the whole sulfotransferase issue to begin with. Even if they did, it seems to me that applying 50 milligrams of minoxidil at a time directly to the problem area is just going to be a lot more efficient than taking 2.5 or 5 milligrams of minoxidil orally with the drug being distributed all throughout the tissues of the body. Not to mention that taking it systemically can cause unwanted body hair growth or can potentially cause effects on blood pressure or edema. Additionally, even if you are a poor responder to topical minoxidil, there are ways to get around that. One option is to use topical tretinoin, which can upregulate the sulfotransferase enzyme to turn minoxidil non-responders into responders, and I'll link my video on tretinoin below if you want to learn more about how to do that. Another option is to use higher concentrations of topical minoxidil, like 10 or 15% topical minoxidil, because there is research which shows that poor responders to 5% topical minoxidil will be good responders to 10 or 15% topical minoxidil. I made a video about higher concentrations of topical minoxidil, which I'll link below too, but the point I'm trying to make here is that even if you are a poor responder to topical minoxidil, there are easy ways to get around that. So, there's really no good reason to take oral minoxidil other than laziness. You are not going to get superior results in general, and there is still a small but verified risk of extremely dangerous cardiovascular problems with oral minoxidil usage. I don't think the convenience outweighs the risk. Like I said earlier in the video, you only really need to use topical minoxidil once per day. The way I do it personally is I'll do it a couple hours before going to bed and then I wash it out in the morning and that way I don't even have it on my scalp when I go outside. So it is clear that the explosion of hype from oral minoxidil was not justified and in light of the new research we have here, dermatologists who hype this drug up should really reevaluate their stance on it. If oral minoxidil was a lot more effective than topical like many people claim, it is, then maybe you can make a case for using it, but that's not the case. So when people get angry at me for not promoting oral minoxidil on my channel, hopefully now they can understand my rationale. Oral minoxidil just gives you an increased risk of side effects with no additional hair growth benefits, and this research here proves it. So I don't care if other hair YouTubers want to keep promoting oral minoxidil. I mean, that's their business, and I don't have anything against that. Truth be told, I've actually lost subscribers because of my stance on oral minoxidil, but despite that, on this channel, channel, I'm going to still stick with the version of minoxidil that was actually FDA approved for treating hair loss, topical minoxidil. Topical minoxidil is a clinically proven product. It's the best hair growth stimulant on the market today, and topical minoxidil is the only type of minoxidil I will ever recommend. All right, chums, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.